Hey there, today I wanna to talk to you about how to find balance on your farm and how you can make adjustments to your business plan. So before I get into this today, I just want to talk about something really quickly, and that's when you start a farm or while you're farming, you have an idea of what your farm wants to be, the stuff you want to produce, you know, the people you want to sell it to, all that kind of stuff. But don't be afraid to change that. If it's the kind of crops you're growing, your sales outlets, your marketing strategy, you know, getting more help or making the farm bigger or smaller, there's a lot of things you can do to make it work. And don't be set in your ways. And I think you know, we all need to keep that in consideration if we want to be successful. Now, I have not been showing you guys a lot about in the garden because I've just been playing catch up the last month or two and I'm finally getting a lot of the fall crops planted out, a lot of greens and stuff. And I'm also changing my business strategy a little bit. And so that's really what I talk to you about today, uh, letting you guys know about what I've been changing right now on the farm and some of the reasons behind that. So there are two podcasts I was a guest on that I recorded a couple months ago, but just came out in this past week. One was the Thriving Farmer podcast, the other one is the Intellectual Agrarian, and I'll put links down below if you want to check them out. But I find it really fascinating to go back and listen to what I was talking about a few months ago, or even a year ago, and sort of see how quickly things change. And I also get asked a lot for advice on new farmers because, you know, I am a new farmer and I like to share my experiences as you guys know. And I often don't even listen to my own advice. And so. Yeah, I'm sort of feeling that right now, and I've mentioned this before. And so, as you guys can probably see behind me here, um, I've covered up a bunch of beds, even more than I did in that other video. And last end of last season, I had about 19 beds, and this year I pushed out to 29, and I'm back to about 19. And I think that might be the good spot for me. I've just been overwhelmed with trying to keep my beds full, and I actually don't need all that produce for my sales outlets. In fact, this is way more than I need right now. And I'm just gonna try to manage this for the fall and the winter. I've really picked up my microgreens production and that's been a, a, a thing that's changing for me and that because of my market and my sales outlets. So another thing that I wanna update you guys about is that I'm not doing family deliveries anymore. And this has been a tough decision for me, but I'm really trying to streamline and focus my energies into what's working. I really believe in the 80-20 rule and really focus on what's working and what's not and dial in the things that are working. So. I am now getting into a couple of new restaurants and looking to get into a few more and really trying to focus on those customers and how I can best service them and grow the things that they want to grow and just be really reliable with that. And for me, it's just a time thing and because I, they don't take as much time as delivering to 20 families. You know, I deliver to four or five restaurants and the reality is that's more income than 20 families. And I, I, the support I've gotten from my families has just been incredible. But for right now, we're just putting that all on pause and I'm just focusing on restaurants. Now here, what I've realized in my market, every market's different, I always say that, but there's a big need for microgreens. And so I'm really ramping up that and trying to get more production. And so I've invested in a couple of more um, racks and some more shelves and a bunch of nice lights. And I'll do another um, video about that once I finally get it all set up. I'm not quite there yet. I'm also uh, picked up some more hens and so I'm really dialing in and scaling up those operations of microgreens and eggs. I am not abandoning my field crops but I'm going to really limit the number of crops I'm growing. I'm probably going to be sticking to like lettuce and then some baby greens like arugula, um, maybe baby kale and mizuna and maybe some green onion but just a couple of crops and so that's really the focus because that's what my customers want right now and so I'm just going to grow for them and just keep it really simple. I'm also trying to find a balance with YouTube and I've mentioned this before and I think I'm about there. I think I'm going to get that sorted, but I just want to make sure that I'm not overextending myself with work so that I have a little balance in my personal life. I could spend more time with my family and things like that. And you guys also know that I do a lot of stuff around the house with the kids because my wife works long hours. So it's been tough to just try to find the balance. And I was just feeling very overwhelmed with the amount of bed space I had and really not needing it. So that's been a big change for me is just, you know, sort of admitting to like, I don't need these beds right now. And I think we all have this this urge as farmers to try to grow as much food as possible. And things got a little bit put into perspective lately with some conversations I've had. And you know, you talk to a farmer or you, you know, you see a farm on Instagram and they're just putting out huge amounts of food and you're like, I should do that. I should have more food. You know, I should create, uh, you know, grow more stuff and have more customers and make more money and then take on uh, employees and grow the business. But you know, in reality, 
every context is different and every market is different and all the profit margins are different depending on where you are. And so you have to make it work for your context. And don't get caught up in growing your business and blah, 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 because you, if you dial it in and really get efficient on a small number of things, you can make a lot of money. And I think that's something that I really want to talk to you guys about is just really dialing things in, getting really efficient and figure out what works and what doesn't. And I think that's a big thing that we all need to focus on. One thing I've realized pretty quickly about selling to chefs in my area and the chefs that I'm dealing with is that they're looking for good eggs. And I was kind of surprised that they didn't have direct access to farmers that are producing eggs like this, but I guess they're not. And so there's a huge demand right now and I don't have enough eggs. So what I did is I just bought 15 more hens this weekend. And so now I'm running about 60 out here and I have another 25 or so uh, young pullets. that will be probably laying in November or so. So uh, yeah, really scaling up the egg production. This is pretty, this will pretty much max out the chariot and sort of our land and what it can support. So it's gonna be great. But yeah, eggs have been a great product. And a lot of people ask me all the time, they're like, what should I grow? What should I, you know, what should I have my farm? what do the chefs want and so you know what talk to them like once you get a relationship with a chef or two they'll know all the other chefs and they'll sort of know the landscape of the farmers that are out there and what's available and what they're looking for so if you have a really good customer and you build a relationship with them is what you should be doing and you know they'll say hey I really am looking for um, spinach or I'm really looking for eggs or I really want you know you know, really good local uh, pig products or whatever it is. Like you just need to make sure that you are um, giving your customers what they want. And so right now, this is what the market's telling me. They, I can do really well with microgreens and eggs and then supplement that with some field greens. You guys know I like growing lettuce and baby greens, so there's gonna be more of that. But yeah, we got a lot of hens out here. Um, I picked up some hens that, as I said, they were like 20 weeks old or so. So hopefully they'll start laying pretty soon. I know they're stressed out because they've only been in here for a couple days, but egg production right now has definitely dropped. Um, you know, when you're falling off to the end of the summer, I got some of these, some of my older hens are starting to molt. And so the egg production is dropping right now and the light is also dropping a little bit and I don't give supplemental light. So hopefully these new hens will kind of bump that up a little bit and then we'll get another bump in like November or so when the young ones come into lay. All right, so I'm in the garage now and you can see the microgreens behind me and I'm gonna, as I said, I'm gonna make a video about my new setup. I'm not quite done setting it up, but really I'm gonna increase my production efficiency and so before I had capacity for about 32 trays and that was for microgreens and for my nursery starts and now I'm gonna be able to handle about 60 trays. And so the nice thing about microgreens is you can scale it up pretty quickly. Now, I did not imagine myself to be a big microgreens grower as I just mentioned, but the market is saying that I should be growing microgreens right now. I've just talked to a lot of chefs and there really isn't a lot of people in Raleigh that's doing it, so it makes sense for me right now. And I just really wanna reiterate the fact that whatever your business plan is, if you already have a farm and maybe you're struggling with a couple things or you're looking to start a farm, you need to just sort of not be too dogmatic about your approach, right? Like just because you wanna grow specialty heirloom crops or you wanna do you know, 300 egg layers or you wanna just do microgreens or whatever the, the focus is for your farm, you know, make sure that you can sell it. I always say that in your context and your market is different. So what I'm doing now is shifting strategy to try to maximize my sales and my profit because this is a business and we need to be sustainable as a business because if you're not making money, you're not gonna be farming. So if you get caught up in trying to grow too quickly and then your quality suffers or you burn out or you lose employees or you just can't keep up with things, then you're not sustainable no matter how much food you produce or how much money you can make. You have to make sure you're thinking about this in terms of the long term. And so a lot of my time and energy lately, as you guys have noticed, is, is producing YouTube videos and I really wanna continue putting a lot of energy into that because I think it's important and I'd really like this channel to grow a little bit beyond just me and my little farm and I'm gonna as you've seen I've started to interview and incorporate people from the community around here chefs other farmers and I'm starting to do that with some other people too and I just want to really promote you know this this movement of local agriculture and sustainable agriculture uh, so that you know you guys can get motivated or get ideas or connect with people and things like that so I'm gonna continue doing that uh, my posting schedule I've been changing it around a little bit but uh, I'll, I'll dial that in and get that sorted and I try to keep putting out content for you guys so what's the takeaway from this video just make sure that you are not afraid to change things up if they're not working or if you really want to streamline things um, you may be producing products that you didn't think would be your main 
main products or that you didn't want to be your main products, but you have to listen to the market and you have to make sure your business is profitable. And so I just want you guys to keep that in mind is, you know, a lot of us have struggled through the heat this summer, myself included, the heat and the hard work and all that stuff was tough. And I'm sort of, I see the light now at the end of the tunnel with the summer and moving into fall and winter where things are a lot slower and a lot easier. But we need to make sure that we're able to get through these, these hard times and that our systems are balanced, our farm is balanced, our business is balanced, and our life is balanced. And these are important things for you to consider. So don't be too stuck in your ways. I've said that a lot, but make sure that you just look at all the different situations, sales outlets, products, you know, things like that, and make sure you guys are being realistic about it. And also be realistic about how much money you're actually making. Because a lot of times I think we just, we, we're not very good at keeping track of things and we just look at sales, but there's a lot of costs on the back end too. And you wanna make sure that you're actually making money doing this and it's working for your family. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.